Namaste, this is Aditya and welcome to Shankam Architect channel. Today I am going to talk about AEM cloud deployments using the Cloud Manager CI/CD pipeline. If you are liking the videos which I am doing, please like, share and subscribe to this channel. Let's get started with the presentation. Okay, so let's first try to understand what is uh, DevOps. Okay, so DevOps includes two terms. One is development and another is operations. Okay, so as part of development, what happens is uh, uh, the developer will write the code. Like for example, in AEM, if we take, you'll write the HTML code, JavaScript and all that, right? So that is part of the development process. So uh, he writes the code. And then there is something called as operations also. So what does operation mean? It is like uh, we need to install the AEM in particular server, right? And we, we have to deploy all this code onto particular server. So all the provisioning of those servers will happen through operations. Okay, so operation team is responsible to understand like what is the server configuration which has to be there uh, to install AEM and how this code deployment has to happen and how many servers we need and like uh, how many like dev uh, stage and prod and that is one categorization and even in the prod like how many publish instances we need and how uh, the server configuration should happen um, that will be decided by the operation team and also the provisioning of the servers right that also will happen through operations okay so all this is managed by the operation so what uh, devops principle says so devops is nothing but it is a set of principles or standards so they say that the development team and even the operation team has to work together closely so they will have to have the frequent meetings and they will have to work closely for the development and operations to go hand in hand smoothly okay so that is what is meant by the devops okay so while you are developing uh, a software or an application you need to inform the operations team as to what kind of servers you need and what is the load they have to take and all those requirements have to be uh, passed on to the operation team and they have to work in coordination with each other so that is what is meant by devops Okay, so then let's understand what is DevSecOps. Okay, so DevSecOps is, uh, it has everything which uh, DevOps has, but it also says that the security also must be considered. So in, Dev, in DevSecOps, what are layers of the security will take care is uh, the code security, infrastructure security, then we do the automated uh, security testing, then access controls and identity management if they have been configured properly. So, it, uh, so we have to give the least access possible to each and every person to be able to do his job. So we should not be assigning any more roles or anything else. Okay. So then network security, container orchestration security. So what are these containers and what is this orchestration? We have discussed in our previous video already. If you haven't watched it, I'll leave the link in the description box. You can, you can watch it out. Okay, so the, this also has some security layer in it. And then monitoring the incidences. Okay, so if there is any security incident, how do you handle it? So DevSecOps principle says that you will have to consider the security also and then you do the development and operations uh, accordingly. So that is the DevSecOps principle. Okay, so now let's talk about uh, CICD. So what is CICD? So these are the processes which are set up to help the updation of the application like updation of the code and deployment. How can we automate it so that it happens smoothly? Okay, so that is what we are taking care of as part of the CICD pipeline. Okay, so let's see on high level what are all the steps which are covered. So first thing is source code repository. Okay, so we need to have a central repository where we are maintaining our code. Okay, so this is the first step and then the second step is build system. Okay, so then build has to trigger automatically. Okay, so then automated testing. So then the testing has to happen automatically and then the quality checks has to happen. Okay, notification system. Okay, and uh, automated deployment. Okay, so all these are part of the CICD pipeline. So let's talk about first this source repository. So what does the source repository mean? and why do we need it so let's say developer 1 and developer 2 are working on an application okay and they are from the same team and developer 1 also has to work on the class a and developer 2 also has to work on class a 
okay so both have to work on the same class but then developer one is doing some changes in class a and developer two is doing some other changes in class a so how do they merge these changes okay so earlier there used to be a lot of conflicts in this code merging okay so this source code repository will help us to solve that problem so the tools which we use for this code uh, repository is uh, the tools like git okay so github so they maintain the centralized repository and uh, version control through which all this conflict management can be done so let's try to understand how this git works in aem context so this is how it will be okay the git process in aem cloud manager so aem cloud manager will come with its own repository okay so then what we do is generally we create branches so let's say there is a main branch okay which is given by the cloud manager okay from that main branch we create three branches like let's say dev branch stage branch and prod branch so then what we'll do is this each of this branch we will set it up in the cloud manager with certain server dev server right and the stage branch will be set up with the stage server and production branch will be set up to the production server so why are we setting it up so that the code will be auto deployed okay so once the once we want to deploy this dev dev branch code into the server it will get auto deployed so how will this auto deployment work we will see it later okay first try to understand the git process so first we might create uh, the dev stage and production branches so in all the projects it may not work in the same way but i am giving the high level view as to how it might work okay so later on uh, once you are into your project you, based on this knowledge you can try to understand how exactly the git process is working in your project okay so then uh, we first divide this into three branches dev stage and prod so this is the first step so then let's say uh, generally this cloud projects right in cloud projects they are very big okay so it is highly uh, rare that only one team is working on this dev environment okay so there there might be multiple teams which are working on this dev environment right on the same repository basically so then what will happen is from this dev repository we will create multiple branches like team 1 branch team 2 branch team 3 branch like that we will create multiple branches so that each team can work on their own branch okay so that is the uh, uh, second step we will do like second branching we will do like from the same repository or from the same code base we'll create a, a new branch so what is this branch this branch is nothing but is copy okay so whatever is the current state of this uh, dev repository or dev branch right now so the same code we'll copy it into another branch or we'll create a another repository basically so same code we'll copy paste and dev2 also uh, team2 also will copy paste the same uh, code so then what happens from this team 1 in this team 1 there might be multiple developers again right uh, there might be like uh, five developers so each developer again will create a feature branch from this branch so let's say this developer 1 is working on a user story 1 and developer 2 is working on a user story 2 then this developer 1 will create a feature branch for his own development and developer 2 also will create a feature branch for his own development okay so once these branches are created then he will create a local copy okay so let's suppose he is using intellij so he has created the branch but then he will he will download this branch into his intellij on his local okay in, and in the intellij he will do all the relevant changes okay he will he will do all the changes and he will he will commit the code here okay he will commit the code in, in his local in intellij and he will push all that code into the feature branch which he is working on okay so this is the after the development he will push that code again into this feature branch similarly this developer 2 also will work on his local copy and once the development is done he will push all his changes into feature branch so then what these people will do this guy will create a pull request onto this branch okay he will create a pull request and this guy also will create a pull request okay they they too will create a pull request okay so now let's say if this guy is doing a change on class a and this person is also doing a change on class a 
then in the team one branch it will show it as a conflict okay so then they get an opportunity in their local to merge their code okay so the first this guy can uh, first uh, get the pull request approved and then he will uh, do the changes and his changes will re reflect onto the branch and this developer can fetch the latest code again into his local and on top of uh, that latest code he can do these code changes again or he can just merge those changes if they are too too different like in the class say if this guy is doing function a and this guy is working on the function b then IntelliJ will give you an option to just merge the code so it will merge automatically the function a and function b together in this local copy if they are interlinked like this this guy is also working on function a in class a and this guy is also working on function a in class a and if they have to merge it then they might have to merge it locally or manually so that call they these developers will can take and they can merge their two codes and then they can test their two codes in the local again and once it is tested they will deploy the code or create a pull request into the team one branch okay so then their code uh, will be there in the team one branch all the code of the team one will be there in the team one branch similarly team two similarly team three uh, every team has their code in the in their own branch okay so then their own team branch so then what they will do if they want their code to be deployed into the dev environment what they will have to do is they will have to again create a pull request onto the dev branch okay so this team also will create a pull request this team will also create a pull request like that every team will create a, a pull request onto the dev branch so then uh, every time you create a pull request it will go through an approval process so anyone any of your peer team members have to uh, review and approve here also any of the peer team members in the team 2 will review and approve for it to get merged into team 2 branch but for it to get into dev branch uh, to but for it to get a merged into dev branch so it might need uh, the approval of a tech lead who is doing the code uh, review right someone will review the code of all these teams and then he will approve the code and to for it to get merged into dev branch okay so this is what we are talking about what when we say the code uh, source code repository okay so this is what is source code repository okay which maintains all the versions and it will allow us to create the branches so that developers can work happily okay so this is one of the step in the cacd process which am cloud manager also supports okay so then next step is automated build system okay so then what should happen so once all this team merges their code onto the dev environment what will happen is automatically a build will get triggered so when we do in our local we run the command like mvn clean install minus p auto install package all that right so that build uh, code that build command will get triggered once the pull request is approved and all the changes are merged into this uh, repo automatically the build will trigger okay so that configuration someone has to do right so that is part of the automated build system which operation team will do okay so then once the build is triggered then what will happen is it will do the quality checks so some tools like sonars uh, and other tools will help to do the quality check what will they do is well they will analyze all the java code and that tool will confirm if the code uh, which everybody has written is as per the coding standards or not okay so that quality check will get triggered through sonar but then how will it get triggered so the triggering point of this sonar will be part of the pom.xml so in pom.xml we will configure as to at what point this sonar tool has to trigger and it has to do the code review so that uh, thing will be there as part of the pom.xml so once this build is triggered it has to execute that build process right to execute that build process it will see the pom.xml and in the pom.xml it will have the reference to this sonar queue and then it will trigger that uh, sonar and then that sonar will analyze this code and it will review the code and it will highlight any if there are any uh, coding issues okay it will check for the coding quality automatically so that is part of the build process and as part of the build process only uh, there are other things which get executed which is the automated testing okay so what is this automated testing so as part of the automated testing we write the j units okay so we write the j units for the unit testing 
and there could be integration tests and the functional tests also okay so j units are generally written by the developers and but the integration tests and functional tests are written by the testers okay so these configurations also will be there in the pom.xml and as part of the build process these tests will get triggered and uh, unit tests will get executed and all these tests will get execute, uh, executed and if there is any error in those tests then we will have to have some notification system which will notify the developer that build has failed so generally if there is any error in the j unit or any of the tests right then build will fail alerting the development team uh, notifying them that there is a build failure and some error has to be fixed okay it has to point out the exact class as to where the build has failed okay so that notification system also must be there as part of the CACD pipeline okay so then what should happen is once all these tests are approved then there could be again a code review or approval process wherein this is an optional step basically wherein there, there could be an additional step for the deployment to happen generally in dev environment the auto deploy will be configured so that once the j units and integration test everything are run so the merged code the once the build is uh, successful it will get auto deployed onto the dev environment so for that to get auto deployed we have to configure right onto which environment it has to deploy so for that in the cloud manager what we do is we map this branch to the environment into which the code has to be deployed okay so so this cloud manager will support all the cacd processes that's it for today jai hind